Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to cover a brief article that was sent to me from Keegan. Thank you for this wonderful piece of uh, concern. And in fact, this is the reason why I am concerned about a lot of the data collection and things that are going on. There's so many back doors going in that, that we just don't understand. We could read the terms of service and sure, if this guy had read and understood his terms of service, maybe he could have seen something sort of like this coming, but we are gonna point out a few interesting little oddities in here that go a little bit above and beyond the creepy level to make this, yeah, a little bit more a little bit more out there. And these are the things that make me concerned about the proliferation of data collection and all of the sharing and why I'm concerned about companies like Microsoft with last week we did the video how the Microsoft repo gets into the Raspberry Pi OS, not just Raspberry Pis as a whole, just Raspberry Pi OS. And it's harmless enough in this phase. It's a simple repo, but yes, it does ping a Microsoft service and they can collect the IP address and know what that might happen to be. And uh, the biggest challenge is that these companies are buying up so many things, they're becoming monopolies in a time when monopoly laws don't actually mean anything. So Microsoft buys up GitHub, Microsoft buys up Skype, Microsoft buys up LinkedIn, and then they can share all this data. It's almost like Facebook. Facebook buys up Instagram, Facebook buys up WhatsApp, and then they share all the data, even though a condition of that sale was you're not allowed to sell or combine all these datas together. But this is the type of thing we're seeing. And then we have the third parties. Ever see this notice in any terms of service? And they're all the same. It says, we can, you know, we don't share your data except maybe our partners. Well, who's your partners? Everybody under the sun, including the federal government who just comes and buys up stuff like, you know, the, the government buying up your uh, location data instead of getting a warrant to find it. Uh, this is the type of stuff that indeed has me concerned. So the article here is from The Register, and this is a person utili utilizing Azure. So Azure, of course, is one of the cloud hosting platforms. You can go in there with your Azure account. You can spin up a variety of different virtual machines and do a lot of different things. Azure is basically Microsoft's version of AWS. And uh, AWS might be freaky and scary and funding Lex Luthor's takeover of the world, but at least we can say about Azure, uh, excuse me, about AWS is <laughs> allegedly they're not doing what Microsoft did here. So this dev is creeped out after he fired up an Ubuntu VM on Azure and was immediately approached by canonical sales rep. <laughs> hmm. I always feel like someone's watching me, he says. So there is an update to the article. We'll get into that. But this is just a glorious little piece of why I'm terrified. So Azure customer outrage after finding himself on the receiving end of an unexpected LinkedIn message from Ubuntu maker Canonical last night. Now, this is... Uh, we need to identify a couple little things. If you have the Azure account, and this was apparently a company Azure account on a company email address and whatever else, and this developer's LinkedIn account is on his own private email, there's no direct connection between the company's email address that was used with the Azure account and the LinkedIn address that his LinkedIn profile was. Other than maybe, I would wager the guess is, is that... Microsoft knew who the company was based on the company LinkedIn profiles, email address, matching the URL or the domain name, but rather of the account creating and then tied that to the guy's LinkedIn profile. Nevertheless, this is becoming um, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon and I ate bacon for breakfast. Okay, so. The user has spun up the instance of the Linux distro on Azure corporate subscription in order to evaluate some tooling. Sensibly, the subscription is used as a sandbox for the purpose of testing. And that's important. We need to make sure that we're testing stuff. I do this frequently. 
Upon clicking add new VM, the first option was Ubuntu 18.04. According to, is it uh, Bongorni? I'm going to say Bongorni. My apologies if that is incorrect. He selected it in order to get his Linux kicks. Shortly after, however, a message turns up from an enterprise development representative at Ubuntu with the ominous phrase, I saw that you spun up an Ubuntu image in Azure. Like, within minutes? Uh... <laughs> Winston, take your ID badge when you leave. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so... This guy offered to be a point of contact. Was Canonical somehow aware of what an Azure customer was doing in the dashboard? So the register spoke to Bongorni, who has confirmed the sequence of events and noted that Azure's portal's UI didn't provide any insight on whether that template was coming with a specific TOS, as he cheerfully chose Ubuntu. So... There was nothing in there that said, hey, by spinning up this VM, you're going to share your data with Canonical. Now, as we'll see, that was actually in the Azure's Terms of Service on, you know, page 782 in all caps, small print on the bottom of the page or something. We'll get to that because that is effectively Microsoft's um, um, customer relation person. It's a reminder, always check the small print and the icons, apparently, as implications of the orange icon were not clear to him, particularly not that his data would be shared. The previous thing he said was the direct contact on my was on my private LinkedIn account, which he noted did not share the same corporate email, which means canonical sales hunted down his specific name on social media and reached out directly. What is this guy doing? Nothing but sitting here waiting for some, like, I'm going to wait for some Azure to pop up. Oh, it's created. <laughs> this is the username of the guy. Let's spin up this guy's username. And then now we're going to track him down. <laughs> and that's basically what they did. Microsoft and Canonical are certainly good chums. The companies recently boasted of the one-year anniversary of the partnership that delivers the best and the most secure open source for customers. A co-sell model launched back in 2019 sets them up for a mere passive engagement. <laughs> uh, but this is not exactly what they considered passive. As they say, we thought of Canonical's engineers peering over one virtual shoulder and the tacit approval of that Microsoft might appeal. The explanation is likely simpler. A look at the terms... So where we have the terms for Azure Marketplace throws up the sentence, quote, if you purchase or use a marketplace offering, we may share with the publisher of such offering your contact information and details about the transaction and your usage. So sure, that makes sense. Okay, we are having this giant cloud server and we can host inside of this a lot of different options. And indeed, you will find in, in Azure, you find this in, in AWS, you find this in Linode, you find this. There's the official distributions, there's community scripts, there's other cloud scripts, there's your own old backup files. You click the button and you spin it up. And what Azure does that apparently nobody else is doing is all of those third parties, every time one of their, their VMs gets spun up, boom, that team gets an email. And that's the concerning part because as the article goes on that talking about how this could be concerning because what if some scary malicious third party happens to submit something and we all know based on Google's Play Store and other things that um, these things are not checked quite as thoroughly as they lead people to believe. I mean, if you want to know how good Microsoft is at this, you can look at the fact that there's usually more errors with a Microsoft update than, than uh, fixes in any given Microsoft Windows update. Now, presumably Azure might have a few more resources to look at, being as this is the very thing that made Amazon profitable. May as well make Microsoft profitable as well. So if some third-party malicious actor gets in there and manages to get their distro in there, what data are they sending out? Because, hey, it's just our third-party provider and they need to know that you have it. 
And so that's one of the things that they, they say down here. Uh, I would not, uh, let's see, he says here, he reckoned the sharing of data was in some ways understandable in spinning up a third-party template, but he added, make it very clear when you're going to pick a specific VM from the Azure portal, like what information is being shared. He says, I would not have deployed it if I knew someone would stalk me outside my corporate channels. Certainly something a bit clearer then a strange little orange icon would indicate the eminent deployment of the stalker bot. Hmm. So here is this. Oh God, Azure had a golden opportunity to pull a, we don't mine your data. Uh, we don't compete with you. Who knows <laughs> um, what we do. Instead, they did, uh, they, uh, instead they legit did exactly what their competitors don't, but we worry about. No, I don't want to go to Twitter. Thank you. I just wanted to highlight that. All right. So this is the actual tweet. Hi, Luca. I saw that you spun up an Ubuntu image in Azure. I'll be your point of contact for anything Ubuntu related in enterprise. Was there a project you are currently looking into Ubuntu for? Best, Dane. He told us he was considering switching to a different provider, likely one based in Europe, to be sure that there's more transparency and more GDPR openness, he writes. He also highlighted a further wrinkle in the story of Canonical, as an Azure Marketplace publisher was handing information out about using templates that could, could a hypothetical malicious publisher also receive as similar. That's what we have just mentioned. Now, the challenge of this is if I'm spinning up Ubuntu, there's probably a reason. And if I need help from Ubuntu's enterprise team, uh, I can actually find that data. I don't need yet another person in my email inbox. Thank you. I have way more messages than I know what to do with. This is 2021. If you want someone to find your services, have a good presence on the internet and make those services available. Going out and annoying people who did not ask to be annoyed simply because you spun up a service on an unrelated, well, I guess it's somewhat related, on some third-party application is creepy to the extreme. And we actually get an update from both Canonical and Azure. Following the publication of the article, Canonical responded to our calls for comment with this statement. Um, this, is, this, is, this is the terrifying part that I'm most concerned about. Quote, as per the Azure Terms of Service, Microsoft shares with Canonical, the publisher of Ubuntu, the contact details of developers launching Ubuntu instances on Azure. These contact details are held in Canonical's CRM in accordance with privacy rules. Uh, we'll get into the second part of that quote in a moment. I want to mention here... So this raises one of those fundamental problems. I go to work for a company, or maybe you're sending your children off to school, and school says, we're using Google, and so the school takes your child's registration information, and Carte Blanche hands all that to Google without talking to you about it first. So where I might create a Google profile and be like, you know, Google doesn't actually need to know my birthday, okay? They don't. You want to know how old I am? Fine. I agree with that because sure, services can't be for people under 13, but do they know my exact birth date? They do not need to know that. Do they need to know my full name, my middle name, my last name, all of these other details? Do they need to have my home address, all this information? No. And if I'm setting up that Google account, I will feed only the information that I need to use. And I may even use some pseudo data in there because I might need to do that for my own personal privacy. But some third party, they don't put any thought to this. They don't put any rationale to this. Let's just give it all up. So with the school, they're going to give Google all of your child's data without consulting you. And that happens nearly every school and maybe about half the schools. The other half, it goes to Microsoft. But in the case of this company, the reason they tracked this guy down is because when the, the master corporate subscription account for Azure was created, the, the uh, people setting this up created developer accounts for each of the developers. And unbeknownst to the developers, they sent Microsoft, in addition to the corporate email, they sent the developer's email, they sent the developer's name, the developer's contact information, and who knows what other information to Azure, and then the corporation agreed to share the data, but the individual user may not have agreed to share the data, but they spin it up under the company developer account and all that data gets shared 
anyway. That is the serious concern about this type of stuff and why we need to be more proactive, why we need to not just roll over and why we need to have upfront conversations with companies and we need to have protections from this type of stuff happening. They have a second response from Canonical. On February 10th, a new Canonical, as a new Canonical sales representative, contact one of these developers via LinkedIn with a poor choice of word. In light of this incident, Canonical will be reviewing its sales training and policies. This is, again, his tweet. Um, well, this is his email push out on tweet. And he writes, uh, I don't say those words on this channel, but you are welcome to read them. What the bleep at Microsoft and Ubuntu. Hi, Luca. I saw you spun up an Ubuntu image with Azure. I'll be your point of contact. <sighs> anyway, but that, so, hey, at least Canonical's looking into this. Maybe it would have been better to not do this to begin with. And this is why people like me have been concerned about Ubuntu's data collection for a long time. Do I trust them to collect data with snaps? Do I trust them in all of these ways that they're edging their way in? I don't because of this. You say, you're just paranoid. No, I'm not just paranoid. This is the end result. Microsoft also chimes in. Microsoft, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I gotta, I gotta put on my, my PR guy. Microsoft, privacy and trust is our top priority. Apparently it's not privacy and trust is your top priority. This guy tweets out, what the F, Microsoft, what the F, Ubuntu? Because you shared the data with somebody nobody knew was going on. This is not privacy. This is not trust. But I digress. Do, uh, we do not sell any information to third-party companies and only share customer data with Azure Marketplace publishers when customers deploy their product as outlined in our terms of service on page 782 in very small print that you need a magnifying glass to read. Our terms with our publishers allows them to provide customers with implementation and technical support for their products, but restricts them from using contact details for marketing purposes. Really, it restricts them from that. Um, uh, what else are you sharing the contact details for? What guarantee do you have? They already said that that data goes directly into Ubuntu's CRM. If you are unfamiliar with the business world, the CRM is used for marketing. Somebody's violating something here. Well, anyway, if you are interested in cloud computing that does not do this nonsense, I actually did just speak with a uh, gentleman at Linode today. I had a few other account questions. I asked him about this article. He says, I've never heard of that. That's creepy. And uh, he says, to the best of his knowledge, at least, Linode does not share any data. If I want to go into Linode and spin up an Ubuntu, Canonical does not get information, the best I understand. I might be wrong about that, but anyway, we, we know for sure that Azure is. It's in their TOS, and I don't remember anything like that in Linode's TOS, uh, but you can have a look at Linode. I have an affiliate link for that, tlm.li forward slash Linode. If you use that affiliate link, you will get $100 in credit, good for 60 days. You can spin up all the Linodes that you would like, test around with things, see what all works, and then keep what you want at the end of that uh, 60 days. And then their prices are actually really good after that. So anyway, have a look at Linode. With that, guys, this is why I'm concerned with all of the data and hiding behind privacy policies in terms of service that, you know, take the privacy policies, take your data, give it to somebody else's CRM, which is CRM is used for data. <laughs> data marketing and things. So anyway, that's my thought. That's why I'm concerned. Let me know your thoughts this article in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.